In my humble opinion, I believe we are living in the golden age of mirrorless cameras. I think we are going to look back at this time period as the time when your average everyday consumer could go out and buy affordable cameras and lenses that gave them professional video and photography. And this lens is one of those lenses. This would have been impossible just a few years ago to get a 10 millimeter f 2.0 on an APS-C body to give you such great quality at such low prices. I absolutely love this lens and I was so excited to go out and use it. The ultra wide of 10 millimeter, which is about a 15 millimeter equivalent on a full frame camera. This will give you such unique perspectives and it's also so great for landscapes or for architecture. And if you want to do some astrophotography, you have a 10 millimeter f 2.0. It lets in so much light so you can go with this budget lens because this is extremely affordable. I have actually made it a habit to go out and purchase a bunch of low priced manual lenses that have good optical quality to help me just renew my joy of photography and also to experiment with focal lengths that I haven't necessarily experimented with before. Now, once upon a time, these cheaper manual lenses, they were for that. They were for experimenting and trying things out, but no longer. The quality has gotten so excellent on these manual low priced lenses from certain companies like this one, TT Artisans, that uh, you will just be blown away by the results. Now, normally I will buy my own manual lenses, but this one was sent out to me by TT Artisans. No money changed hands. They don't have any input on this review, but I gladly accepted it because I do buy a lot of TT Artisan lenses and this one is a new release. So of course I jumped at the chance to try it out and I certainly was not disappointed. And even though this is an ultra wide 10 millimeters f 2.0, this is not a fisheye lens. This is not a curvilinear lens. This is a rectilinear lens. So your lines are going to stay straight. You often don't see that at a 10 millimeter for an APS-C. Normally you would get a fisheye if you are using a 10 millimeter, but not this one. It is rectilinear and the lines stay quite straight. We will talk about the barrel distortion in a bit. Now, I am not saying that this is a perfect lens by any means, but for the price point and check the link to get the price in your country, it does vary from country to country, but I can tell you this is an extremely affordable lens that anybody would be happy to put in their camera bag as long as they don't mind manually focusing. And speaking of that, not minding manual focusing, that is completely separate from what I'm talking about. I don't put up with manual focusing. I love to manually focus. It really makes you feel like you're a part of your photography. You take your time, you know, you use what uh, methods you have in your camera to help you achieve critical focus. I like to punch in two times and then take my snapshot. And uh, this, so it's not a sports photography lens. You're not going to be taking a million photos a second and expecting everything to be in focus. This is a take your time, enjoy your life, enjoy your photography lens, and it does a great job at that. So while a lot of people will like to use this lens for landscapes and for some astrophotography, for me, there's a few other reasons I like to use it. I actually enjoy the street photography at this wide angle. You just get such a scope of what is going on and it really helps capture the motion of a city. When you're in a busy city, then you can just take a lay of the land and the people who see your photo can really get a glimpse into what it's like to live in that particular city. I also love to go into places like museums and uh, with this F2, it lets in a lot of light. And so the ceiling is often decorated very nicely in buildings like this. So I like to uh, turn the camera up and then I get the entire ceiling captured. And I can't do that with any other lens that I currently have. And because of that F2, even though it's a bit dark, it comes out great in the photo. And if you're so inclined, you can use a lens like this for vlogging. You can just set the focus on your pretty face and then go about the world chatting your nonsense with your wide angle lens. It is certainly usable in that capacity, but I much prefer this lens 
as a photography lens, I really enjoy the experience. And I also love playing with perspective with a lens like this. You can just get low to the ground, get your foreground element as close to your lens as possible, as close to the focusing distance minimum as possible, and then you can create a very interesting image that I have a lot of fun with. So let's talk about the build quality of this bad boy. As I said, it is an all manual lens, and that can actually be a benefit in some ways in that it has no electronic parts. So there's nothing that can break on this lens. So as long as you don't bash it off a rock, you can keep this for decades if you want and it's very well built right here look at this all metal construction look at that lovely front element and i'll talk about the lens hood in a second but uh, check this out this nice smooth focus ring which of course you need when you are manually focusing and here is a clicky aperture ring love a clicking aperture ring it just gives you that extra confidence that your f-stops are exactly what you want them to be you know a lens manufacturer has confidence in their f-stops when they make it clicking. So uh, I also like to do it by feel. So that way I don't have to check and look. So by my clicks, I know what f-stop I am using, just using the manual focus to go along with it. A really easy lens to use. Now there is no weather sealing on this manual lens. So you do want to keep it out of the harsh elements. But once again, it has no electronic parts. So uh, just make sure you don't waterlog it and you should be fine. And now when I was talking about the lens hood, so first it comes with this little rubber hood that you can just put over the top if you want to use it this way. But here's something that is very clever. This is right here, a little sunshade. You can hear that right there. It is all metal and uh, this, actually has a filter on it. So there's a little filter thread here. So if you wanna put a 72 millimeter filter, make sure it's a thin one because this is a very wide lens, then you can do it by using this little metal lens hood. So that's great, it will help reduce flaring and uh, ghosting as well with this little hood, but you'll also be able to put on the lens filter of your choice. And if you want to leave on the little metal lens hood like I like to do, it actually comes with another little metal cover. And so that cover just fits into the uh, filter thread right there and uh, the 72 millimeter filter thread, nice and protected your lens. I mean, that is just above and beyond at this price point to have all these little extra features. I didn't even expect to be able to put a filter on a lens this wide, but to have the little lens hood, which takes a filter, the little metal cap, the little rubber cap, in case you don't want to use all of those things, really great that TT Artisans included all of those. Now you can get this lens for all of the major manufacturers. You can get it for Sony E, for Fuji X, you can get it for Micro Four Thirds, Nikon Z, and of course, you can also get it for Canon RF. Even though Canon have banned third-party autofocus lenses, they can't stop the old manual focus lenses. So uh, that is a great thing for Canon users. If you want to get some more lenses, start looking at the manual lenses. And this one from TT Artisans is available on the Canon RF. So let's talk about the sharpness and detail of this lens. And this is what I mean by these lenses weren't possible just a few years ago because you get an extremely sharp image almost all the way down to F2. So if you open it up at F2 all the way, it is still a sharp image in the center of the lens. It is not quite as sharp as if you step it down to F2. 2.8, but once you hit f 2.8, it basically becomes an excellent lens all around, but it is still quite usable at f2, and I was using it at f2 plenty. It is still quite sharp, but if you do step it down, it will be even sharper. Now, the major sweet spot, all lenses will have a sweet spot, and it's usually about two stops down from the maximum aperture. So this lens at f4 and f5.6, and also even f8, extremely sharp, which is fantastic because uh, I like to shoot a lot of my landscapes on APS-C cameras at about f8. This lens fits the bill perfectly for that. So uh, if you're just gonna go out though in the street, you want the sharpest image possible, I would say shoot it at around f5.6. But it is sharp in the corners as well once you stop it down to 2.8 and down and just no complaints at all with the sharpness on this lens. 
very, very pleased with that. When it comes to distortion, distortion is often something that holds back these cheaper lenses from being really highly recommended lenses because you're trying to get some straight lines in your architecture photos and then you start to see those bends and it really can ruin your photo and that can be difficult to correct in post. But I am happy to say that the barrel distortion on this lens is very minimal and you are going to get those straight lines in your wide angle photography and that is just something I love so much. Now, a lot of people do like to use fisheye lenses and they like the look that that gives them, me included, but when I want a rectilinear lens, I want it so that I don't have any distortion and I don't want my straight lines to be curved and this lens does a great job. Now, the minimum focus distance is 25 centimeters so you can get relatively close to your subject with this wide angle and create some interesting pictures. Now, a uh, close-up image quality at f 2.0 when you are going to your minimum focus distance is not quite as good as when you step it down to f 2.8. So once again, once you go down to f 2.8, you are going to get some very good image quality when you are at the minimum focus distance and you are super close to your subject. Now with a lens as wide as this, of course you can expect some vignetting. Now luckily that is easily correctable in post. The vignetting actually never goes away in this lens. If you just go all through the f-stops, you're still going to see some dark corners, a little bit of vignetting. I don't mind vignetting at all in my photos because if I don't want it there, I can correct it. But in truth, I almost always want it. I like a little bit of vignette in my photos. But if you're someone who doesn't, you can correct it with any of the photo editing software. Now, something you can't correct in software very easily is the LOCA, the longitudinal chromatic aberration. And luckily this lens does not suffer from very much longitudinal chromatic aberration. I couldn't find any in my photos. It does have some regular chromatic aberration. And once again, you can correct that in post fairly easily, but there is some chromatic aberration if you have very high contrast scenes, you have edges up against the sky. If you zoom in 300, 400%, you probably will see a little day-to-day -day shooting for almost all of the photos I took with this lens. I did not have any issues with chromatic aberration. It is certainly more than acceptable, especially at this price point. There is a small amount of focus breathing with this lens, but it is quite minimal, which is great if you want to do a lot of focus stacking with your landscape photography like a lot of people like to do, you won't have to do much correction for that focus breathing. And with a really wide angle lens like this, you're not always thinking about the out of focus backgrounds, the bokeh, but uh, when you do get it, it is nice and soft and pleasing. If you get close enough to your subject, you're stopped down to f2, f2.8, and uh, you take the photo, you are going to see some nice out of focus backgrounds, nice and smooth, good fall off. Now something this lens does suffer from, but it's really only at f2 is flaring and ghosting. If you are down at f2 and you shine bright lights into the lens itself, you are going to see a fair amount of flaring and ghosting. But once again, as soon as you stop down to f2.8, it almost all clears up and it looks great. And in fact, you will get sun stars starting at f2.8. 2.8. I was very pleased about that. To be able to get those nice points on your light is so great at f2.8 and it uh, gets very strong at about f4, f5.6. So you don't have to step down all the way to like f11 or f16 to get your sun stars. You can just get them right away starting at f 2.8 and I thought that was a really nice bonus to this lens. So for me, I am over the moon about lenses like this. TT Artisans seems to be the lens manufacturer that I most go to when I want the lower priced manual lenses to go out and really enjoy my photography and it helps so much. Once upon a time, I thought the only thing that I could buy for my cameras were those expensive autofocus lenses. So I was very, very choosy about which autofocus lenses I would buy. And that really limited me from going out and trying out different focal lengths and finding out what I really enjoyed taking photos of. And sometimes I just like to change it up and use a focal length that I don't often use. And a lens manufacturer like TT Artisans making these high quality, low budget, small, lightweight, portable lenses that I can take around and have some fun with, I really, really appreciate that. I can't tell you how much happiness this type of thing brings me and I love doing it. I will do a lot more of these manual lenses here 
on the channel. It really levels the playing field. It makes you a better photographer, but it also allows you to get a bunch of different lenses for your lovely cameras to go out and have some fun shooting. So uh, let me know down below if this is the type of focal length that you would look for. If not, why don't you tell me what focal length you like to use? And I'll be sure to review those lenses in the future. Thanks for watching this. We'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.